Hello everyone, my guest today is Connor Lee. He's the founder and CEO of a company called hiplead.com. They help leading B2B companies scale their outbound sales with high quality lead generation and outbound campaigns. Before founding the company, he founded several other companies including Telfi, which was in Y Combinator winter 2011 batch. Before that, he worked as a lobbyist and led statewide political campaigns. Connor, are you ready to take us to the top? Already. All right, very good. So last time you were on the show was back on December 8th of 2016. And when you were on at that point, you articulated that 2015 revenue had passed 900,000 bucks in ARR. You had about 30 customers, each paying about four grand per month. And you had just passed 120 grand a month in revenue with 1% churn. So healthy economics. Give us a quick update on the business and then tell us about where it is today and new products. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, so hip, hip leads continue to, to grow. Um, you know, we've, we've, uh, you know, we, we've been growing at a steady pace. It's, it's, it's around a hundred and 150 kind of, uh, ARR, uh, in that range now. Uh, what, sorry, and, what do you mean? Wait, well, 150 in AR? Sorry, 150 in MRR. Got it. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, you're, you're at 150 million bucks. Damn. <laughs> uh, no, 150 in MRR, uh, currently. And, um, you know, basically the business is, you know, we help companies to, to scale their outbound sales. Uh, both with people and with data, um, and and one of the biggest things we noticed, um, you know, working with companies over the last, you know, I think you know, I think when we we talked what almost December eighth, twenty sixteen, yeah, two almost two years ago, yeah, um, and uh, and basically what we saw was there's even bigger opportunity. Um, you know, companies still need data, uh, but we saw that uh, that a lot of the things that we were doing, we were spending our time working with companies, was actually helping them to like manage all of their data. So they've got, you know, Salesforce, they've got the marketing automation software, they have all of that. And none of it is really designed to, to, to make it easy to manage data. They're all their own silos. So uh, we built a product called Sona, and it's gosona.com. Uh-huh. And uh, we're doing about 100, uh, sorry, uh, 28,000 in, in MRR already with, with Sona. That's uh, included in the 150 you just told me? It, it, that is included in the 150. Correct. Yeah, yeah, the company, and so and uh, and Sona is basically a freestanding self-service product uh, that helps people to manage all of their data. So um, whether that's uh, keeping track of inbound leads that are coming in, managing data that are going into marketing campaigns, social media, all of it, we kind of plug into all those systems, keep it updated, track it, and it's a one-stop shop for for all the things that you deal with with people data. And Sona is short for persona. Oh, so, interesting. So is this, I mean, it's like a full, like a full contact, a clear bit kind of play. So in a sense, we have, we have that data. Um, so we have, we have our own data, which, which is, is similar. Uh, and, and, and with Sony, you can plug in other, under other data vendors into it. It's, it's a platform to manage all of the data. And it's something that like a CRM should be doing if a CRM was built for the modern era. Interesting. Uh, Right. It, it, it's sort of like a, it, it's a CRM that's, that's integration first in a, in a sense. And, and although you don't put your data into it, it's a place to manage it, store it, keeps track of it, keeps everything updated. And it's designed so anyone can use it. You don't have to be technical. And what do you, again, 20 months ago, you had about 30 customers. What are you at today? Uh, we have 50 plus customers. Okay. So- that range, yeah. That's great. So, so e- what each can I take fifty into the one hundred fifty grand in monthly recurring revenue, and assume each one's paying you about three grand a month? Yeah, that's about accurate. Interesting. Yeah. And and are they paying mostly for like a feature set or a volume of leads you're delivering per month? What are they paying for? So we we engage with clients on the hip lead side of things for to help run and manage their outbound campaigns. So that includes data, uh, and it also includes um, you know effectively services. So helping them to, to make their outbound email campaign or to make their um, other campaigns uh, scale. So from a funding perspective, have you raised additional capital or still just you've stayed at 200? Yeah, we've, we've stayed at that level. We haven't we haven't raised. We're still bootstrapped more or less um, and stayed at that kind of level. Yep, yeah. that's good. And and so, I mean, w- w- walk me through kind of your thing about it, right? So you go from 120 per month kind of 19, 20 months ago, you've added 30 grand in new monthly recurring revenue. Some would say, eh, for a new company, like that's like really, really slow growth. We want to see it going faster, especially once you have at least a dollar of funding. Walk, walk me through how you think about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, we're, we're in the process of moving from, you know, a services business into a, a, a pure SaaS company. And, uh, you know, and that's in, in, in funding the growth of that while keeping both of those companies alive. So, um, 
um, you know, so, so it's sort of like if it was just a pure SaaS play initially, if Hiplead was, it would be a different conversation. But what we've had to do is we'd have to, you know, effectively, um, you know, divide the company uh, so that we have, you know, folks that are working on the services side or the Hiplead side, and then we have folks that are working on the product side. Why do you and sell then, off Hiplead? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we might in the future. Um, that's definitely, that's definitely a possibility, but you know, as a, you know, as a bootstrap company, um, hip leads, hip leads revenue is, is, is growing, is, is paying for development and, and all of that on the other products. Is uh, it growing? Is it growing? I mean, if, if the new product's doing 20 grand a month in, in sales or 28, I think you said already a month in sales and uh, over two, almost two years ago, you were doing 110 just on hip lead. Well, today you're doing 150 combined. If I take, you know, 30 off of 150, it's 120. So it's basically, I mean, it's basically flat. And if it's a service, it's low margin. Again, why not sell it off and double down on Sona? Yeah, it's a possibility. Um, we, you know, the, 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 we, we built Sona basically because we had a lot of insights into how, you know, we worked with over, I think now 250, almost 300 different companies that are all SaaS companies, B2B SaaS companies. And so, uh, Hibley's given us insight into, into, you know, real problems, um, that other people simply don't understand, um, very easily. We've worked with so many companies and we've seen the gamut of, of behaviors that what it's allowed us to do is, is build a, build a really great product that, that very, I think very few people would have approached, um, having not had the experience. And so we still think hip leads a, a valuable company, um, at minimum, just to keep us in the loop of, of what everyone's doing. And, and that, that, that's a major leg up, uh, on other folks. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we might, we might sell to in the future. It, it just depends on how things go. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, Sona was really only, um, only it's beta started in beta about two months ago. So that's been, that growth is all in two months. Yeah. So. That's great. And we're recording this in, um, let's see, we're recording this in July 24th, uh, 2018. So this will come out later, but just to give some perspective. Um, interesting. What about, so, so what about churn, right? It, last time you told me churn was 1%. I'm guessing, I, I'm not quite sure how you came up that 1% last time if it was all service revenue. Yeah. So with Sona, I mean, we have, we've had zero churn. Um, well, now. it's new. It's two months in. Uh, but we've had, we've had a number of renewals already. Um, so our, we've already had mm -hmm three of our customers have already upgraded and renewed, um, on that product. So, so it's pretty, it's pretty great to hear and no one's turned off, uh, especially an early stage product. So that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, and so, you know, services business ha oftentimes have, you know, can have higher churn rates. Um, you know, but, but you didn't, that's where I'm a little bit confused. Last time you came on, you said you only had 1% churn in the service business. So I didn't see that as a service, usually a service business, you'd see churn will be way higher than that. I thought it was a pure play SaaS business back then. Yeah, well, it had had elements. So we were we were supplying data and also running services. So our business had the service component. So not all the companies we work with, we we help them to run outbound campaigns. Um, some of them we do, uh, and then with the ones that so we basically supply them with data, uh, which is a very low churn, and then we supply that help them run an outbound campaign. Uh, and so both those things work in tandem to generate. So um, so yeah, and so if someone let's say oftentimes what we do is we work with a company. And we would, uh, they would work with them for three months or six months or a year, whatever it is. They get their outbound process up and running, uh, and then we just supply them with data. So that that's why our that's why our churn rate is very low. Data being literally email leads. Yeah, email. Yeah, leads, exactly. this is still a tough space. I mean, you look at companies like eTools, Hunter, find anyone's email. I mean, they're all trying this, and what they're all realizing is like they're just not sticky unless you provide additional value. Yeah, that that can be difficult. I mean. Um, you know, it, it can be difficult to, per, to understand, you know, you know, leads are leads are leads. You know, I mean, if, if, if everyone can get the same data, that can be hard to differentiate. And so I think what, 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 you know, not the, the secret hip lead, but one of the reasons why hip lead has been able to be around this space and be successful and, 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 you know, without taking a lot of outside revenue or, or, or whatnot, uh, has been the fact that, that we, 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 we later in, in humans, in areas where humans are best, you know, so understanding where to, how to do things using our knowledge and then being efficient about passing that on to our customers. So it's not a high touch consulting product. Uh, it's a light touch consulting product, but what we do touch, it adds a lot of value. So as you move again to a Sona, which it sounds like you've codified a bunch of this, right? Is a no touch pure play SaaS model. 
Um, I mean, how do you resist the urge to keep selling a big service contract to satisfy short-term cash needs? Yeah, it can be, it can be difficult. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it can, um, to, to do that. I, I think, you know, I think you just, just have to do, I just, I, I think you have to cut your safety nets. You just have to go for it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, um, I think, you know, we, we want to get to a place where, um, as a bootstrap company that, that, that we feel comfortable to, to go in and, and, and rip the bandaid off. And yeah. What's the team size today? Uh, so we've got five in SF and, and another 12 around the world. So. Okay. Okay. So good. I mean, it's still, it's still pretty large. So, so about call it 17 people in remote locations. Yeah. Um, interesting. Very cool. Um, what about, um, chur- you said it's too early for churn on the new product, customer acquisition cost. I assume you're just selling into agency customers from hip lead, correct? So, I mean, we've gotten a, f- a few other, other new, um, customers as well. Um, we haven't, ro- you know, we, we're sort of early in rolling out our marketing, um, process, but, but we, um, but we're, you know, we're, we're acquiring customers now via outbound and also via, uh, via inbound kind of powered with our product. So that's great. Um, Fli- yeah. flipping back, sorry to hip lead side for a second. How many customers do you have just paying you monthly for not services stuff, but just for delivering data? Uh, I think roughly 30 okay. right now. And, and that revenue stream, just that part, not the services, not so not anything. What is that? 30, 40 grand a month? Yeah, roughly, roughly, roughly. Uh, yeah. Somewhere around a thousand a month. Yeah. So someone listening to this, there's a lot of people that's in the show who are buyers of these kinds of things. I mean, they would look at that and go, okay, if it's 30 grand a month, it's 360, you know, somewhere around 360 a year, call it 400 a year. I mean, they would offer you, you know, one or one and a half, depending on what churn is, just give you a quick 500 grand cash infusion, which you could use to grow these other things. Would you take that deal? I have to look at, I'd have to look at the fundamentals. Um, I, I, right now, probably not. Uh, although it depends, you know, it depends on strategic, um, you know, hip leads, Hip leads, it does a lot of great things for us. Um, yeah. and, and so, you know, for that, that kind of revenue probably, probably wouldn't necessarily be worth it. Um, but, uh, but it really just depends, you know, on, on, on our position and everything else. Yeah. I, I really like Hipley just con- continuing to run it, um, is because it just, it gives us a great amount of insight into to what a lot of different companies are doing and their problems. And that's, that's hard to, that's really hard. Well, you can put price on it. It's very expensive. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. A lot of the most successful SaaS companies, I mean, Ryan at Hootsuite, that started as an agency. Yeah. I mean, doing exactly what you're doing for the exact reasons you're articulating. So I get it. But he also had the insight to know when to cut bait and go all in on yeah. Hootsuite, right? And that's a hard thing to manage, right? So we'll, we'll watch closely, man. I'm rooting for you. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, man. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think about this. <laughs> Don't make one up if you don't, if it's, yeah, if you I've haven't. About this. Well, I've, um, uh, I mean, I think the same I said last one was, this, which is the, uh, the, uh, Ben Horowitz's book. Hard uh, thing about hard things. Hard thing about hard things. So yeah. I still like that book a lot. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Huh? Uh, I, so I would think that, um, I mean, obviously, we're we're always in tune with what's going on in and um, you know, Salesforce. I mean, that's you know, um, Benny Off is, is always something that someone that I've always admired and, and always like what he's doing. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business? Connor, what's your favorite online tool for building? Sorry, your business? I lost. Uh, favorite online tool for building the business. Um, you know, we've. Uh, right now I like Zapier a lot. Yep. Zapier. It's a good one. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I like to get a good amount of sleep, about seven, well, good amount, but it's seven, seven hours of sleep for me. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Married. Just got married. Congratulations. <laughs> That's like, yeah, you just got back from the honeymoon, right? Right. Yeah, no, I just did. no kids yet? No kids. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. And last, and last question, how old are you? I am... 36. 36. Actually, I, I lied. This is the last question. Take us back to your 20 year old self. What do you wish you knew? Uh, what do I wish you knew? Well, in my twenties, I was doing a lot of random things. Um, you know, I probably would have just said, Hey, just, you know, commit to one thing for, 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 uh, for five years and, and stick it out. So 
<laughs> Guys, there you have it. Commit to one thing and go for it. He launched Hip Lead, grew to about 100 grand per month in revenue, but was unhappy because it was a combination of service-based revenue and high churn SaaS revenue. He said, you know what? Let's take what we've learned from these you know, 50 or 60 or you know, 200-ish customers and kind of codify it into his new product, Go Sona. Uh, it's a play on Persona, really a place for salespeople or sales teams to manage all of their people data. Interesting space, hyper-competitive. We'll see what happens. Launched in 2012, 17 people all around the country. Currently, about 150 grand in total revenue. That's up from about 120 grand just a year ago. 50 customers uh, paying about three grand per month, 200,000 bucks raised. Connor, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Anthony.